On Tuesday, Home Bank Shares and Liberty Bank Shares officials announced a $280 million stock and cash deal to combine. Home Bank Shares retail bank Centennial Bank will combine with Liberty Bank to create a pretty big statewide footprint. Joining me to talk business is John Allison, chairman of the board of Home Bank Shares. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Really? This is the first time I've had you on the TV set before. We've done a lot of interviews uh, in person, but I don't think I've ever rolled a tape with you on this. I so. think you're right. <laughs> it's a little different, but it'll work out. It right? will. Um, Wallace Fowler told me, the head of Liberty Bank Shares, told me uh, at the press conference earlier this week that You'd been thinking about this deal for a long time, he thought. Um, how long had you had this deal on your radar? Only about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I tell the story that I had the door slammed and, and I got kicked out a few times. That's really a jest, but uh, I did pitch him several times. I think it was uh, the first time I made an offer was uh, August of 06, followed by a February of 07 offer and another offer in the middle, and I can't remember exactly the date of that, but an August of 12 offer, and then an offer uh, this year. So what do you think finally broke his will? I mean, if you've made that many runs at him, why did he finally think this was the right time? Uh, as, as, as a lot of private banks out there today, the shareholder base is getting a little older. They're not getting the dividend like they, the cost. sometimes they get a dividend, but some of them don't get a dividend, and there's not any liquidity in their stock. So. It, it's just uh, pressure from the shareholder base probably brings a lot of that on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got more regulations, management gets tired, you get beat up, the board gets tired, and you don't know what your stock's worth. You know, they, you, you can't look in the paper and see what it trades for. So, at home, it's, it's pretty simple to see what it trades for. Well, we're going to talk about a little bit of all those things you just touched on there, but let's stay with uh, Liberty here. The marriage of these two banks has very little overlap when you look at the footprint here. At, uh, I think there is a location in Searcy, a location in Moralton, we're really Correct. about the only places. Um, where are you going to find efficiencies? Because you're obviously going to have to weed out a few duplication services in this transaction to make it work. Well, the back office, obviously, they have, uh, they have a few more personnel than we have, you know, per million dollars of, of deposits. So we'll probably, probably be some job losses, not significant job losses. We'll let attrition take care of most of that, but uh, there'll be uh, there'll be lots of savings from the consolidation. The data center will probably move to Conway, and uh, the data center in Jonesboro will probably, a portion of it may still remain because we're going to take the best practices, and we just toured up there, mm -hmm. and we found some very impressive people in, in uh, Wallace's organization. Cool. All right. Well, I want to pull up a uh, graphic that we have here. Let's look at uh, kind of some details of the merger here. We got, uh, let's see, um, uh, 151 locations, 92 of them in Arkansas. We've got about uh, $7.1 billion in assets. We've got $5.6 billion in deposits, $4.5 billion in loans. Um, how, you had told me at one point in time that you wanted to get this bank to $6 billion, and that would be kind of a crossroads. You corrected me in the press conference the other day. It's now it's $8 billion. How do you get from $7.1 billion to $8 billion? Is that all organic growth? I don't know if it's organic growth. You know, we were, we've been shopping, been on shopping sprees in Florida, and we'll probably, once once we get this one under our belt, six, eight, ten months down the road, we'll probably go back shopping in Florida. We had, it was a little overwhelming. We had opportunities inside of about 10 days that were about $14 billion worth of opportunities. And we had to back up from it and, and look at it and, and determine which ones made the most sense for home bank shares. So those opportun a lot of those opportunities are still out there if we want to go to them. I'm just not going to 10 yet. I'd rather go to 14 or 15 because of Dodd-Frank. Well, let's talk about that. That $10 billion is a magical tipping point there. Absolutely. Why, I obviously I understand why you want to stay under $10 billion, because uh, you don't want to play by those additional rules and regulations. The expense, but, the expense of them. You, you better be 14 to leverage or 15. Just being 10 just gets you there and you get all the expense. Okay, well that was my question is what's so, why do you want to be so far over well, 10 billion? You spread billion? it, you mm -hmm. know, you spread it. Uh, you, you, you think what's going on in, with all these regulations today, all our local community banks still have the same regulations that I have now and I have 7 billion to spread it over. Well, a lot of these guys have 100 million, 150 million, so we're killing our local small town community banks that were really cornerstones for, for the communities for many years. And I think it's extremely sad. 
you mentioned Florida. That's where there's some ripe opportunity there. Is there other opportunity in Arkansas? Because when I look at your footprint, there's not much south of Little Rock. I think you've got a branch in Bryant, you've got a branch in Fordyce, and then it's pretty white space maybe, down there. Maybe a, a couple of opportunities down there. My friends at Simmons seem to have most of that covered pretty well. They've done a great <laughs> job with that. And uh, we'll probably go back to Florida. That, that's probably our next. Uh, it's a, there's a pretty good jump between Arkansas and Florida, but I kind of stay hitched to it. As I say, we stay in our lane. We don't get outside our lane. We understand Florida, understand Florida real estate, and we understand Arkansas. We'll stay pretty much in our lane. We obviously stay very much in tune with what's happening with the Arkansas economy. It's our focus. But I, I don't stay up on what's going on in Florida. From when you went in down there with some of those first acquisitions, and then you've built that over the last few years, what's been happening with the Florida economy as it's been rebounding? It has come back extremely strong. You know, they say timing is everything. And our timing may have been perfect in that market because the upswings happened, the houses have gone away, all the con the ten year supply of condos in Miami are gone. Uh, it's really cleaned up. Prices are moving up. Uh, our banks, those banks were not making any money, and even in the heyday, they did a one percent ROA. We've got those our Florida banks doing a one eleven ROA now, so we're extremely proud of that. What do you want to see them do? What, what's well, the mark you want to see them do? You hit? know, they I, they didn't run. That's about what they ran in the heyday. But we think our minimum standard, is, as coming from the old first commercial days, is one fifty ROA. Our combined companies run to one seventy. I've got my Florida Keys operation running 198. I've got Alabama running to 168. Florida overalls running to 111, and Arkansas is running to 230. So those are the numbers. And when you when you think about those numbers and the efficiencies we glean out of our Arkansas operations, and think about bringing Liberty in, that's where the decision came to bring it in. What, what is what was Liberty operating at with its ROA? Can it's you disclose that? It's running about 0.8. They're running they're running nice, about a 0.8. It's a, it's a decent ROA, but it's just not to our standards. So. I mean, it ought to double. That's, uh, someone said, are you paying it? Did you pay too much? You pay less. I said, it doesn't have anything. I didn't buy it based on what it's earning. I'm based on what it, I bought it based on what it can earn. Mm -hmm. I do know this about you too. You like to get a good deal. I've talked to you about a lot of the deals that you've done before. Uh, you've picked up some of those Florida properties for pennies on the dollar, basically. Um, you have a longstanding relationship with Wallace Fowler, though. I can't see where he would let you buy something for pennies on the dollar from him, and I can't see where you would want to buy something for pennies on the dollar for him. Describe the fairness of this deal. Well, the fairness is that I think I played, paid a little too much, and Wallace <laughs> thinks I paid a little too little. So when, you, when that kind of trade goes on, you know, time remains to be seen. If I can get it, I bought it for what it's earning today. If I can get it to double that R ROA, then I bought it worth the money. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. I want to talk, come back and talk about a few more things happening in the banking industry at large. You stick around through the commercial break sure. with us. Be glad All right. to. Time for a word from our sponsors. More with John Allison, Chairman of the Board for Conway based Home Bank Shares. You're watching Talk Business. I'm Roby Brock. We're back after the break. The Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. We are back with John Allison. He is chairman of the board for Home Bank Shares, which acquired Liberty Bank Shares of Jonesboro this week. You're still feeling good about it. A week into the transaction, you hadn't unearthed anything that you think, uh, what was I thinking? Well, no, I don't, I don't think so yet. I, don't, I, don't, I believe it'll be a good, good transaction. Uh, Wallace runs a good bank. He has good people. I addressed the officers Wednesday morning. I mm -hmm. uh, had a good feel with the officers. He has a great... Uh, uh, online system and I'm talking to people in all over the state of Arkansas and it's clear as, as, as TV is perfect and we don't have that we've never spent the money for that and <laughs> because Randy Mayer my CFO said it cost too much but now we got one You've anyway. We've acquired the asset. We've acquired now, the asset. But we're not backing up we think it's a great trade. Good. Um, well, now Wallace told me uh, that he was going to get out of the way. Do, you've told me you didn't want him to get out of the way. He could do whatever he wants to do. What is Wallace's role going to be in this new banking <laughs> well, operation? As I told you before, Wallace, much stock as he owns, it's whatever he wants to do. But he thinks he wants to spend a little less time there. He said 
I, I invite him to the board. He's going to be on the board. Mm -hmm. He'll be a tremendous asset. He said, I may not attend all the meetings. And I said, well, come and go as you please. So <laughs> I said, I'll keep you informed. Or Mark, his son, Mark's going to be on there representing the, the shareholders of Liberty also. So he'll keep them informed. Well, with technology now, too, if he's driving around in an RV, which is what he said he wanted to spend more time doing, I don't understand why, but that'd be all right with me if he wants to do that. He could at least conference call in for some I of was, those meetings. That's, I was out of town for about 10 days prior to this, I flew in the day before the transaction closed, and technology, I was on top of what was going on the entire time, so it's pretty simple to keep up with it. What about the, your management team? You mentioned Mark Fowler is gonna obviously have a role um, in this new uh, operation here. You've got your loyal lieutenants or field generals that have been handling a lot of these transactions in Florida and other acquisitions that you've been making. Do you restructure your upper management team to incorporate some big players from Liberty in here, or do well, you have the folks in place already? We haven't, that decision that? hadn't been made yet. We, uh, uh, we're operating with three regional presidents, of which Randy Sims is the CEO and the leader of the group. We'll probably add a fourth regional. You'll probably hear that coming in the next week or 10 days is a fourth regional that'll be over the Liberty operation. All right, we'll, we'll wait and hear about that. Let's turn our attention to some larger banking issues, some things that are going on. Obviously, Dodd-Frank is on every banker's mind, I can't have a conversation with a banker without those two words, Dodd and Frank, coming up in the middle of it. It's still not fully implemented yet. There still are regulations being promulgated. What is implemented, or what is implemented that drives you crazy? Well, number one, consumer protection, that deal they've got, they're gonna, they're gonna kill the consumer loans, in my opinion. I think what we end up with is, is is people in the House and the Senate making rules and regulations and they have no idea what they're doing. They don't understand the, the repercussions of this effect. Home mortgage, we're probably going to be forced completely out of the home mortgage business. We're probably not going to be able to do home mortgages. Why is that? Well, they just the restrictions have come down on it so much, it, it's almost dangerous to do. And to the point that consumer finance, we have to charge every consumer. Every consumer has to be treated exactly right, alike. So no longer is it your friendly banker. You walk in and we punch it into a box and it punches back information to us that approved, not approved, the rate seven and a half or the rate six and a half. It's, it, you've taken all that out because they're concerned about, they're concerned about treating someone the same way that you treat someone else. And I understand that. The problem is it's not worth the risk or the headache to home bank shares to get sued or the hand slapped or stopped from acquisitions, not be able to do acquisitions in the future. So just stay out of the business. Mm -hmm. So I don't, the number of, you know, first we had home mortgages and they were taken by the securitization and Wall Street and took out, SNLs had them and then they got securitized. I thought we were really going to get back in the local home finance business as we used to do many, many years ago. At First National Bank of Conway, probably a third of my portfolio was good, solid home mortgages in Conway, Arkansas. They've taken that out away from us and made it too dangerous to fool with. What is not implemented yet that you see on the horizon that I you think is... I can't answer that. I mean, it, 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 it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, it's kind of like, what did Nancy Pelosi say? We need to read it to know what's in it. And they're still writing this one. So it, it is extremely frightening to a guy like me. It, you know, because I, it takes away the certainty. You don't have, you don't know what you might be playing with. That's exactly right. You don't know what. It, 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 a lot of it is arbitrary. You know, they can, regulators can come in and say, well, you didn't do this right or you didn't do that right. And it's their opinion. You know, it's not black and white or a fact. It's not a number. It's not a number that you should have a capital ratio of 10%. It, it's arbitrary. Fair lending is extreme. That's the part I was talking consumer loans, mm -hmm. home loans. It's, it's just frightening to me. I'm going to pull up another graphic that we've got here. I want to run through some uh, quarterly banking statistics here. And you can take a look at these right here, too. This is from the first quarter of 2013, the FDIC statistics. Uh, basically, 126 financial institutions in Arkansas. Cumulative net income for those 126 uh, banks up 30.6% over the first quarter of last year, up 43% over the first quarter of 2011. And nationally, that net income is up almost 16% over a year ago. If all of this regulation's coming down and bank net income is doing so much better compared to where it has been the last year, two years, three years, what am I missing? Compared to what, though? You know, if you want to compare that income to 08, 09, that crisis, you know, you might be up 100% or 200%. So I'd say compared to what? I, I think it's getting tougher and tougher out there to make 
the money that, it, that we used to make. Margins are getting squeezed. There is no loan demand. So where do you go? What happens? And, and due to the fact that Arkansas hadn't had a lot of growth, we have some good, our growth's been solid. Let me say that, our growth's been solid. But since the fact we hadn't had a lot of growth, what we end up doing is stealing from each other. Because I'm at 5%, so you quote them four and three quarters, the next guy quote them four and a half, this guy quote them four, this guy quote them three and three quarters. It's just gotten insane in this state, and, and we just don't play the game. Occasionally we have to play the game, because it's an I-1 customer, and we just steal from each other. So that's a frightening deal. The, the dumbest thing bankers are doing is shooting themselves in the foot with rates right now. They're going out stealing from each other. And we just saw the 10-year Treasury run the highest, as quick as it's running, 26 years I read this morning, running up. We know it's going up, and here we're doing 3%, 3.5%. I'm not doing that crazy stuff, but you hear about it everywhere, and it's pretty frightening. Uh, speaking of running up, your stock has run up as a result of this deal. Mm -hmm. You had a pretty good week. Mm -hmm. um, uh, home bank shares did. You, pleased with that reaction? Was that in the ballpark of what you expected to well, happen? Well, you looked at, uh, you tracked some deals. Renaissance out of Mississippi did a smart deal and their stock ran up 20 percent. Uh, Ozark did a smart deal, their stock ran up 20 percent. Uh, SBCT, SCBT out of uh, the Carolinas did a smart deal, stock ran up 20 percent. Now those deals were done about seven, eight weeks ago or a month or two ago and then the last week or two there's been a couple of deals done and the stocks didn't move. So what I told Wallace Fowler was, if the street liked the deal, the stock will move in the face of it. So obviously the street liked the deal and thought what they wanted to know, the real key to this deal was how much dilution of tangible common equity you're gonna take. And we've got an 18 month earn back on our, on our dilution of tangible common equity. That's really what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. It's it, all of these other figures and numbers it's train riding money. How much money do you have in tangible common equity? How much of this deal is going to dilute that and how long it takes to get it back? There's a lot of deals being done out there in five, six, seven years to get it back. This is less than 18 months to, to recover. All right, you're chairman of the board, but you're not chairman of the Federal Reserve. So, But if you were king for a day and you got to set some monetary policy and you got to change some economic conditions, what would you want to see happen that you think would boost this loan demand that you say is sluggish or anemic that would basically stimulate the economy in a way that you are getting the type of bank business that you would like to see? Well, some of us have survived pretty good in this crisis and some, of, some people haven't, but you think back, and my attitude was that if Romney won, that over the next 24, 36 months, he's a job builder. It's jobs, it's purely jobs. It's a job related, the whole thing's related to jobs. I thought we'd get some jobs and, and we'd start building back. And uh, no disrespect to the president, but he never created a job in his life. So here, where we are is where we were three years ago. We're just slugging our way through this deal, just fighting our way through. But when your home bank shares, who has an opportunity to buy failed banks, then we play on that side. Mm -hmm. So it kind of turned out to be a win-win for home. If Romney had won, we would have benefited because of job growth. And there'll be a new president at some point in time and somebody will create some jobs. If I were head of the Federal Reserve, I'd do those things. I'd incent that businessman to go create jobs because if you'll get the entrepreneurs of this country involved in the game, they'll fire it up and they'll make it happen. All of these houses that were sitting out there, suddenly that they let entrepreneurs and hedge funds and business people, go, business people go buy those and they're gone, but they're basically gone. Mm -hmm. I made that statement, if you remember my story in Texas when all those manufactured homes right. were there, I bought them all. I cleaned it up, I bought them all and cleaned it up. If you turn the entrepreneurs loose, let them go, they'll clean it up. All right, he's John Allison. He's the chairman of the board of Home Bank Shares. Always great to visit hey, with thanks you. Thanks so much. I, I appreciate, appreciate you doing it, being in with us. We're going to move to the political arena after this word from our sponsors, Johnny's favorite subject, the matter there. I'm Roby Brock. This is Talk Business, and we are back after the break.